Hey friends, it's Tracy. Welcome to today's video. Me and my flip-flop Santa and my cheesy Christmas lights are back again and we are bringing you some Christmas in July inspiration. Today it's all about the Santas and I love creating rustic country, sometimes vintage looking Santas and I'm going to show you exactly what I did in this video. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get started and let me share what I have for you today this pack of two brushes they're chippy brushes from the Dollar Tree they have a wood handle on them and has the you know the brush on them these are two inch paint brushes and so I am going to paint them with primary red paint let them dry now I want to kind of point out those ribbon rolls those work great by you know just sticking the end of my paintbrush in there and letting it dry I just use that to my advantage okay so then uh, once that's dry then I'm going to put on this Santa face and I'm just going to be making a circle the paint I'm using is medium flesh by a ceram coat and I just make the circle like that usually I put it on there with one coat now for the cheeks I'm gonna go ahead and use coral color paint I just use my uh, stencil brush to do that it's a little wispy and I like the more up and down cheeks and so that's what I do I just take my time just go on and just kind of put as much on there as I want to now uh, the next thing I'm going to use is this caulk and I like to get it from the Dollar Tree and so this is what I'm going to do put it on there like that I kind of do like you know <laughs> kind of like frosting a cupcake or something like that and so I just kind of like take my time just do my caulk go around and then kind of do a point down at the bottom like where the beard would go then I will go back and actually do the uh, back part of it as well and then let that completely dry I don't want to forget about his eyebrows so I just take a skinny stick and just do some eyebrows there at the top now I want a little distressing and I do this or achieve this by just using some brown paint and then I water that down I'm just using a punch cup and then actually one of those scruffy brushes that come out of that paint pack that I do uh, like that is listed in my Amazon shop this works great for this so I just kind of water down that brown paint and just go over the Santa beard just to give it some distressing then I just use a baby wipe or our Kleenex to get off any of the excess so you can see here the one in my left hand is distressed and the one on my uh, right in my right hand is the one that is solid white okay so I'm showing you this uh, yarn now I have had this for many years but a sweet friend uh, did say that she found some of this yarn that I use for the mustaches over at Michael's so that might be something that you may look I had thrown the tag away so I just really don't know what it's called and then what I do is I just take it around two fingers and then I wrap it four times around those two fingers I cut off an extra piece tie it off in the middle then I'm using my cutter B scissors because they're very uh, sharp and they kind of get in between those loops because that is uh, I want to cut those loops apart so that I get the fluffiness for his mustache. For the details of his face, what I'm using is my number two flat paint brush. I'm just using some black paint and going to uh, put two slashes at the top, kind of connecting uh, there at the top for his eyes. Now that's the look that I like, but you could also use the end of a paintbrush to give two dots or a sharpie marker to draw the eyes the way that you like them okay so I'm sharing this here because I had uh, decided to put some you know highlights for the cheeks and on one of the Santas the one on the left I kind of put uh, antique white and nah, I didn't like that it was too dark so I pulled out my white paint and put the white uh, kind of whimsical features on the cheeks all right so for the eyelashes I just decided this day to use my ultra fine sharpie marker and just put some eyelashes for Santa's cheeks and then just using my little detailing brush just putting the white in the eyes 
And for whatever reason, I forgot to click uh, record on my camera. I just put some white uh, stripes on the paint brushes just with my liner brush. And so I did that all the way around. So then I also added some black and white paint splattering like I like to do on all of my projects. Then once that was all totally dry, I did sand them just to expose a little bit of the wood. And then I am giving each of them a coat of this varnish that I like to use. And you can find that varnish at any craft store as well as in my Amazon shop. Okay, so then for the nose, I like to use little miniature wood plugs. This is one fourth inch wood plug that I got from uh, Hobby Lobby. And so then I just glue those on there right in the center. And then to give it some color, I'm using that coral color paint that I also used for his cheeks. I'm using that just to stipple on a little bit of the paint to give him a rosy red nose. Then I'll use my detailing brush just to give a little swoosh on the top just for a highlight. Once I get the nose on, then I will add the mustache there just with hot glue. So I decided to make some miniature signs to add as a tag for my Santa. So I just have some ivory color cardstock, an ultra fine Sharpie marker, and some distress ink. Now the only place I can find di true distress ink is from Amazon. And so I do have that listed in my Amazon shop. So I'm just writing out Santa for one tag. The next tag I will write out Merry Christmas. So I'm just gonna kind of let this go and uh, just you know kind of show y'all how I just hand letter by just using the ultra fine sharpie marker then I go back and make my happy dots with the fine sharpie marker I'm gonna rip the edges uh, to give it a, and then give it some distressing the way that I like and uh, y'all have seen me do this many times on my videos so I'm just gonna kind of let it go and let y'all watch me do my little magic and all glory to the Lord for the gifts and the talents to share with so many fun and sweet friends here I also added some uh, black stitching around each of the signs just to give it a more whimsical rustic look. So I pulled out my glossy accents and just kind of painted over the tag. Now I tried to go uh, gently and not too much because that distress ink does tend to smear. So then I wanted to glitter them up and so I needed something wet for my glitter to stick to and my glossy accents is great for that. Guys you can get it at any any craft store or you can look for it on Amazon. Okay, so then I'm gonna use some homespun fabric and I just chose this green and red one. Uh, now homespun fabric, you can get anywhere at Hobby Lobby, Walmart has it, or jubileefabric.com is another place that you can get fun uh, homespun for any day or as well as holidays. So then here I have all of my like embellishments that I'm gonna put on my Santa, but I ended up not using those berries or the greenery. So I have just some very small jingle bells. Now I'm not quite sure what the size of these are. I just had a whole bunch of them that I rusted up. And so I just had them in a cup so they were not in a bag, but I think I got the bag from Dollar Tree and then I rusted them up using my friend Linda's rusting technique. Okay, so then what I did is I just threaded them on a piece of wire and then uh, just stuck it at the top of that where that hole is uh, on the Santa on the paintbrush. So I'm using my wire curling tool, the, the most smallest one that they have. I will insert a link here. And then as well as in the description, I have a link of where you can find these curling tools and it just really helps uh, uh, if you you know have problems curling wire okay so then now um, I'm just gonna put a very small hole using my wire uh, hole punch uh, I do have a link for that as well it's located in my Amazon shop and so then I just take a piece of thread just very thin thread and then make some you know just thread it through the tag and then I tie a knot there at the top so that it kind of holds it and then I'll attach it at the top where those jingle bells are so that it it hangs nicely on my Santa ornament <music> 
So I'm taking a strip of that homespun that I had torn off and just uh, poking it through the hole of the paintbrush up at the top. Then I'm going to tie it off just for a hanger for my Santa. And these make cute little gifts for coworkers, uh, craft show sellers, for uh, neighbor gifts or something like that and so I just knot it there at the top and then uh, to finish it off I was going to put some greenery and some berries and stuff on it but I just really felt like just the tag and just all the cuteness uh, of the Santa face really just did it justice so it really didn't you know need anything else so I just am tacking it there that little uh, sign or tag so that it doesn't move and this is how they turned out I love them so much and I hope that you do too and if you make some please don't forget to share them with me over in my country charm crafty community or send me a picture through Instagram or Facebook country Santa decor piece using a mini charcuterie board. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. And let me share how I put together this cutie patootie. I'm using one of the mini charcuterie boards, the round one. Now I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. I'm also using some of the faux fur from Hobby Lobby as well as some pit berries, two 20 millimeter uh, jingle bells as well as some greenery. I'm using some red and ivory uh, homespun. I'm also going to use a one inch split ball uh, that I got from Hobby Lobby as well. Now I had this piece of fur because I had cut it for a previous project and I ended I accidentally notched it a little bit and so when you're working with fur and you want to keep that wispiness you want to cut the backing of the fur versus cutting the fur itself and so I get the best result using my box blade now I'm just kind of figuring out here where I want to position the nose and also I'm just kind of taking my time because since I'm going to have to offset this fur a bit since I want to have the wispiness of the fur in the front and I do not want that notched area kind of you know that this is just particular for my piece of fur that I had. So I'm just kind of showing, uh, sharing things that, you know, kind of how I work through some things if I want to use this instead of cutting a hole, you know, cutting into the other piece. I'm like, you know what? I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to make this work. All right. So then that's why now I am, you know, kind of just gluing this on right here and then I will I didn't paint it I didn't do anything like that because everything's going to be covered up anyway and these little uh, mini charcuterie boards are so well made anyway and they just make cute little decor or sweet little ornaments like this so then I'll just continue to glue the fur all the way around and uh, like I said because I had a little notched part of the fur I don't even remember what reason that was so that's why I'm just kind of cattywampus just kind of positioning a gluing and tacking my fur on all the way around and it just so happens that it was the right length uh, I just you know figured out how I could put my nose in there without that notch part where that notch part that I messed up on was in the back and that the front was all wispy like a Santa's beard is all right, I just used some E6000 as well as hot glue just to put on my nose uh, because I wanted to have my nose on there before I put my uh, fabric on there because I wanted to make sure that I get the right placement. Now, I had a different vision when I first started this. I wanted, I didn't cut my fabric long enough to make a, a taller I guess hat and so I had before I realized it I should have like I should have really realized it about this part I'm like girl you're not going to have enough of the fabric at the top to bend it over but I had already gotten too far into the project and I was really you know since I was filming this for a video I didn't want to have to redo it so I'm just kind of sharing that you know something doesn't maybe work out but just go to plan B. Sometimes you maybe even need to go to plan C. 
And so uh, I'm just here to encourage you just to give you ideas that, you know, it doesn't always work out for us creators either. All right. So another thing that I, I'm doing is going to add some stuffing because I want uh, my hat to have a little bit of form. So I'm just using uh, fabric fill from um, Walmart or the craft store or whatever. Uh, but you could use, uh, you know, anything that maybe, you know, you would like that which you use for the stuffing. So I want to make kind of like more like a tube and so I'm just gluing the hat on here and just making sure that it is all tacked down so that I can you know have like um, something to put my little stuffing in and so again here I probably should have you know said you don't have enough fabric but it's really okay because I really like the way that the end result of my little primitive country Santa turned out so here's when I realized, girl, you do not have enough of the fabric to make the hat, you know, fold over the way that, you know, a typical Santa hat does. But like I said, we just went with it. I end up taking a little bit of the stuffing out and saying, oh, nope, that don't work either. So anyway. We're just rolling with it. Okay, so then now what I'm gonna do is uh, make my hat a little bit different, different. just have it you know, up at the top. And so I uh, have some little plastic rubber bands that I got from the Dollar Tree in the like hair accessory uh, section. And I use those all of the time in my craft room. And then I just tie a piece of muslin fabric. I just ripped off a piece of that just to give it uh, kind of, you know, just some fabric at the top. Now for my jingle bells, what I'm using are two of the 20 millimeter jingle bells. And uh, I think I got these at Hobby Lobby when they were offering the rusty jingle bells uh, the smaller size anyway I've had these for a little bit of time so then also to curl the jingle bells on I'm using this brown wire that I got from Michaels it comes on this paddle and I love it because it's brown and it looks almost rusty and you know it just really goes with my primitive country projects okay so then I'm just threading these on and then I'm just going to wrap it around the top and then uh, uh, curl the uh, ends of the wire down just I'm just think I'm using a end of a paintbrush just to curl those down just to give it that wispy rustic country look that I like with my little rusty wire All right, this next part is a little new to me. Now I'm using some of this fur and also I'm using some grunge mix. That is what is in this jar and I just have a chip brush, a chippy brush to uh, put it on with. Now I'm using my friend Tracy Campbell. She is from My Sweet Home Living. I will have a link to her recipe is something that you make yourself in your kitchen and this has kind of taken the world the primitive country uh, world by storm. I will have a res uh, I will have a link to Tracy's recipe. She's so gracious to, uh, you know, kind of have a cute little printable uh, and a graphic posted for everyone because so many people are interested in grunging up a lot of their different things. Tracy also has an amazing channel. She's on Facebook uh, and she's also on YouTube. So I will have a link to her channel. She does have so many fun primitive country style different you know projects and she just is so amazing with just kind of sharing simplicity uh or simple projects and just has a way of sharing just really makes you feel at ease and makes you feel like yes I can do that too so look for those uh links in the description box below and thank you Tracy for being so gracious in sharing so many wonderful ideas with so many people we love them and everybody just wants to recreate them all right guys so then what I'm doing here is I am just you know putting I'm just grunging this up because I wanted a more uh, primitive country looking fur for my Santa and I achieved that look with Tracy's grunge mix and I just love it so much again look in the description box for those links 
so the strip of the fur was a little too wide so I'm just using my box blade and then I'm using this mat that's more of a self healing mat and I'm just cutting it uh, apart a bit and just kind of yeah, I'm using gloves guys I'm using gloves because I don't want all of that grunginess all over my fingers like I did with the candy canes last week uh, anyway but yeah vinyl gloves are a staple in my craft room especially now that I'm you know kind of using all of this grunge mix and just reigniting my love for primitive country crafts like this uh oh I love it all right so then what I'm doing is just you know gluing the fur down and then I'm realizing mm, you know this is way too white so I go ahead and pull out my grunge mix again and then add some of it to that muslin fabric now probably I should have done this you know before I tied it on but you know what we just make do and we just figure out how to make it work when we have it on there I didn't want to have to undo it untie it and then I just use my heat tool to kind of uh, dry everything so that it gives it a bit of stiffness For some decoration, I wanted some little candy canes, so I pulled out one of those uh, pipe cleaners that I grungied up last week in a recent video. I will have a link to that if you would like to see how I do that or how I did that. Anyway, I wanted, uh, I, I put them into, uh, you know, I formed them into candy canes, but they were a little, still a little flimsy. So I pulled out my Stiffen Quick. It's a stiffening spray. And so I just laid uh, my candy canes out on a piece of parchment paper and then just sprayed them with the stiffen quick let them dry and yep we are good to go we are in business so I am just going to decorate uh, kind of like the top of my Santa hat and so I have some greenery and some of those pit berries and then I'm gonna use a couple of those small candy canes uh, just crisscross those just to give me the look that I want for for my little Santa. For a little small bow, I'm using uh, some of this jewelry cording that I get in the jewelry section. And I'm just going to make a two loop bow, just uh, simple, just to put there and glue on the top of my candy canes. For a hanger, I'm just using a piece of that homespun fabric. But first, I wanna add a bit of grunginess to it because first of all, it smells really good. And then a second, it just really adds uh, you know the grunge that we like for our primitive country projects and if that is not something that you like in your projects then don't do it it's just that if you do like that look which a lot of us do this is a great way to grunge up any of your primitive country projects Okay, so then um, I wanted just to kind of share this with you. Uh, I wanted my Santa to hang on a hook and I didn't want his hat to fall forward. So just the way that I made it, I just glued a little bit of it in the back just that so that it would uh, kind of pop up, you know, that top part of the hat. And then I'm just going to make um, just a hanger for the back of my Santa so that he hangs nicely. And this is would be so cute on a little hook on a a uh, Christmas tree as an ornament on a doorknob just anywhere you want just a little pop of Christmas in your home and also it would make a wonderful gift for someone special and to add a little bit of pizzazz to my Santa I'm gonna add some glitter uh, now this is totally optional of course but I love the little sparkle so I have this uh, diamond glitter from Hobby Lobby and then I'm using this uh, Elmer's Craft Bond spray adhesive just spray some of that on there and then just sprinkle on a little bit of the shimmer 
and my little primitive country santa just turned out so cute and i hope that you love him as much as i do did is I put this video together just to kind of show you from start to finish how I create my primitive country kind of vintagey vibe uh, Santa bottles just using some uh, bottles some root beer bottles some uh, wine cooler bottles beer bottles would work coke bottles or anything like that so guys let me go ahead and share how I create these cutie patooties to start my Santa bottles, I'm starting with some clear bottles. Now, uh, regular beer bottles will work or any kind of wine bottles. I've done all of those before too, but uh, these are just clear bottles. My son drinks uh, root beer out of them and then also my wine coolers. And uh, I don't know, they're just really too good to throw away. Uh, if you can recreate something and recycle, upcycle something, if you're not going to, of course, uh, recycle it. Uh, anyway, so what I'm doing is guys, I am putting on a coat of uh, chalk paint and what I did to give it a little bit of texture is I just took some regular baking uh, soda out of my kitchen and I just mixed it in with my acrylic paint. And so then I'm uh, just giving it a coat of that. Now I choose to for my when I'm painting uh, bottles or something like that, uh, chalk paint does seem to uh, adhere a lot better than uh, just regular acrylic paint. You'll need to have some kind of primer or something like that. But chalk paint adheres very well. And I wanted more of a texture to my paint. So what I did is I just mixed some baking soda in with the paint uh, or the chalk paint. I painted my bottles a coat of uh, plaster first just to give it like an undercoat and then all I needed was one coat of the red mixed with the baking soda just to give it a little bit of a thicker texture and I like that for my painted projects on especially on glass. I usually paint the bottom first, let that dry, and then paint the top. All right, so now I'm using medium flesh acrylic paint and then a flat paintbrush, and then just kind of uh, eyeballing a circle. This is going to be my Santa face. And so usually one coat does well if I give it a pretty good coverage. And uh, then I just am going to start the beard. Now I like to use the caulk from the Dollar Tree or you can get it from, you know, any home improvement store, Walmart, that kind of thing. But I just pick it up at Dollar Tree. And uh, then I just kind of, you know, just start putting it on kind of like, uh, you know, um, you are going to decorate a cupcake or a cake or something like that. Just kind of put that on. And then I just use a little stick, kind of spread it around, just kind of like you're frosting a cupcake. And uh, I go down a little bit uh, more at the bottom, kind of like where the beard would be. And then also I do just some little eyebrows, just give a couple of, you know, just kind of above like where the little eyes would be go and then that is going to be really cute now I let this dry completely it does take several hours I usually just let it dry overnight so I don't risk uh, putting my fingers in it and messing it up all right so then now I'm just taking a stencil brush and some coral color paint and just stippling on some cheeks then I will go back and add uh, just some eyes now I like the more almond shaped eyes um, you know if you've been following me for a while uh, you know that that is the type of eyes that I like but you know you can draw eyes uh, several different ways so um, what I was showing first is I'm going to be putting a little wood plug in for the nose but so I was just trying to see my position and then um, then once those are all dry then what I do is I 
am going to add some distressing and I just take some uh, milk, chocolate, acrylic paint, and then some water and I just mix it in a, just a little cup and to get the uh, thickness that I like. Now, what I, how I choose to distress my method is um, different than other people's, but what I do here is I am just... Uh, you know, I don't want it to be so white. So I am just kind of stippling it on and I kind of like made a stain is what I did. And so then I just take a tissue or a baby wipe just to, uh, you know, dab off the excess, but I like the way that it looks, you know, see here is the white and then the one with the distressing. I like that a lot better. And then once I do that, then I just go back and add some paint, some black paint in for the eyes. I don't know. This is just my process of how I do it, you know, kind of the order that I do it. And so I just, uh, you know, filled it in with the black paint. Then using my little detailing brush, the one that has been with me for many, many years, I just go and make some uh, eyelashes. And then uh, I just add uh, use that same detailing brush and add some of the whimsical features uh, just with some white paint in my little detailing brush just to add some lines on the cheeks. I like that look like that. And then um, what we're going to do now is add the white of the eyes just, you know, depending on where you are, how you put the white in the eyes depends on how Santa's looking. Now I like to use these three eighths inch uh, wood plugs that I get from Hobby Lobby uh, for my Santa bottles. So those are kind of the size that I like to use for that. So then I just glue those wood plugs there and then I take some of that coral paint and just you know, dab some of that on so that it gives it a rosy nose. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and add some uh, little white swoosh to his nose so that, you know, just kind of give him a little swooshy nose. And then I'm going to add some splatter paint. And um, I was making several of these uh, Santa bottles at one time because I have... Um, uh, going to be using them for different things. And so uh, I'm just adding the uh, paint splatter black and then I go back and add the uh, paint splatter white. And then for my Santa beard, I'm using this uh, glitter paint. It's diamond. I just have the smaller tube of it. And I just go and just kind of smear a little bit of that on the Santa beard because I like that little shimmer. And I know it just doesn't show up too good on camera, but yes, it's there. For my Santa's beard, I'm using this yarn. Now I've had this particular skein for several years, but the closest that I can find is this homespun yarn uh, over at Michael's. Okay, so to make my Santa beard, uh, depending on how big, um, you know, how big the face is, will depend on how many times I wrap the yarn around my fingers. Uh, but for this, these Santa bottles, what I'm doing is wrapping them around three or four times. Then I cut off a little piece and then I tie it in the middle. Then I'm using my Cutter B scissors. Uh, they're just little short scissors like this. And uh, you can find these in the craft store or you can find them on Amazon. And uh, the reason I mention that is because I do get questions about where you can find those little Cutter B scissors. Anyway, so then I just go through and make, uh, or actually I go through and cut the loops apart and then I trim off the beard just to, you know, my liking so it's not so thick. And then I just hot glued it there right underneath the nose. And then I'll take my scissors and just trim off any fuzzies that may, you know, or little stragglers that I, you know, don't like for each individual beard. Uh, you know, each one is its own creation and turns out a little bit different. For his hat, I could not find any socks that I liked at the time that I was going to be doing this video. So I decided to paint my own. So what I have here are uh, just some white socks that I got from the Dollar Tree and then I brought them home and I just made an instant coffee stain just to coffee stain them. And how I do that is just, you know, put a bowl of water and then I just sprinkle in some instant coffee to the uh, darkness that I like. And then I just soak them for a little bit until I get the, uh, I guess the the stain that I like and then I let them dry and then they're ready to go to 
paint on. So I'm choosing to paint on these because I couldn't find any striped socks. And so I'm going to show you here how you can create your own just with some paint. Now, guys, I am just using a red acrylic paint, but right here I'm showing you, you can also use fabric paint. And the reason that I'm showing you both of those, because if you use the fabric paint, it's a little bit more soft uh, on the fabric versus, you know, just the acrylic paint. Sometimes when you paint on it, it makes a little hard on it. So what you can do if you don't want your paint to be hard, then you'll need something like a gloss medium uh, or acrylic medium rather that you can just get anywhere paint is sold. Uh, it's usually just something that you mix uh, parts into like the same part into it and it doesn't call change the color or anything of the uh, acrylic paint but what it does is that when you paint it on the fabric it gives it a softness that you know you have so that you don't have that hard uh, paint on it but these are just Santa going to be Santa hats and they're just fine <laughs> really they're really just fine okay so what I'm doing here is I am just going to be putting this on my bottle and I just kind of uh, you know play around with it to get the placement that I like I also add some uh, polyfill some stuffing in it just to uh, you know give it a little bit of thickness so I just kind of play around with it you know glue it as I go along kind of scrunch it up and just you know make my little Santa bottle my little Santa bottles look really cute Then I just pulled out some cheesecloth that I also coffee stained. I got this cheesecloth at Walmart in the canning section. And so I just coffee stained that and let that dry so that I would have it for my little uh, primitive country crafts just like this. I also have some of that red and green uh, homespun that I love so much. And again, you can get homespun at different places like Hobby Lobby, Walmart, uh, also Jubilee Fabric com is another place that you can get some wonderful fabric. All right. So then now I'm just continuing to start, at, you know, adding the embellishments to my little Santa hat. And guys, what I usually do is I usually cut uh, the end of the sock. I'll show you that here uh, real quick. What I do is I just take my little pinking shears and I just make some slits in it just to kind of give it like the, um, I don't know, fuzzy look, I guess, on the end. And so at this point, I had forgotten to do that, but I go back later and do that. So what I'm doing is this, I have these 32 millimeter jingle bells that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. And I have that same brown wire from Michael's that I have been using. It is kind of a little rusty looking to me. It's brown, but it, it can pass for a rusty wire. And so I just, uh, you know, use my little wire curling tool to, uh, add the uh, curls on the ends and then I just take strips of that homespun as well as some cheesecloth tie that on the end and just make it look just so primitive country cute I just love that so much and so that pink uh, little uh, paddle that you see up there in the right corner I got questions about that the last time and uh, that I d used it uh, but that is a mask tool that you can find at Dollar Tree or anywhere any kind of makeup is sold you can get those they're little silicone uh, tools and they're used to put makeup on or mask or whatever and so I we just use them for uh, when we hot glue so that we don't burn our fingers and they just work great so then I'll just continue to go around and just you know kind of scrunch and glue and scrunch and glue and then for some more embellishments I'm using some, uh, another one of those grungy candy canes uh, well actually it is a pipe cleaner they were red and white and then I grunging them up uh, on a, a recent video 
you know, that you can see how I do that. And uh, so I just use them for little embellishments like this. So I want uh, some a little bit smaller. So what I did is I cut them apart and then to, cause they were a little flimsy. So what I did is I just took my stiffen quick and just sprayed them so that they would be a little bit, uh, a little bit stiffer. And so then for embellishments for the uh, top of my Santa hat or the side of my Santa hat rather, I'm just using some pit berries that I got from uh, Hobby Lobby and then some greenery and just kind of tying all of that in, just gluing everything with some hot glue, making sure that everything is, um, you know, down. And then also I add just a little, uh, just some jewelry cording that I get from the jewelry section. And I just, uh, you know, just make a just, just a little regular bow. I just really like all the little details. Guys, y'all hear me say that all of the time. The beauty is in the details. For a little bit more pizzazz for my Santa of course this is totally optional but I am choosing to use a little bit of glitter on uh, the hat and so I don't want it to get on my Santa face so what I'm doing is just taking a paper towel and just covering that up and then I take my uh, craft bond it's just um, Elmer's uh, spray adhesive spray and then I just spray it and then I just sprinkle on some little glitter now this glitter is diamond uh, over from Hobby Lobby y'all know my favorite store has all my favorite things and so then I just uh, spray the front and then I spray the back again this is totally optional but you know at Christmas time we always love a little sparkle this DIY lumberjack gnome. Now, when I first found this buffalo red and black sock at the Dollar Tree, I knew that I was going to create a lumberjack gnome. <laughs> it just like it, it, total inspiration. So what I'm using is one of the pumpkins, the wood pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. I'm just using my heat tool just to get off that pesty sticker. And then um, some of it wouldn't come off. So I used my fingernail file just to get off a some of the gunk and I ended up um, you know peeling some of the paint off but it is okay because I'm going to paint over it anyway. I'm using the paint uh, acrylic color flesh tone and I'm just painting a portion of the block just to uh, you know so I could use that for the face and then also I have for his nose I'm using this half inch split wood ball. I get mine at Hobby Lobby and uh, just painting that flesh tone as well. Now I'm going to add some cheeks and uh, I like the more rectangle up and down cheeks. I'm just using the acrylic paint color coral and just using a st uh, stencil brush just to give some color. Now it was a little bit too um, bright and so I just took some of that flesh tone paint and just painted over it a bit so it would soften the uh, coral color a bit. Okay so for um, the part of his beard I'm using this faux fur it's called fawn and this is from Hobby Lobby and I just cut off um, uh, the trick is to get it to look wispy is to just cut through the felt backing um, with an exacto knife or I'm using a box blade here and uh, so I cut off a bit of it so you know it doesn't look choppy and uh, my first part I cut off it was too small so I had to go back and cut a, a larger piece that would wrap around uh, you know my gnome and so then I'm just taking a black marker and just figuring out how I want to uh, you know position the part of the beard that goes on for you know for the gnome and just using my box blade as well and as you can see I'm just you know going through that backing and not cutting through the actual fur 
So um, before I put my beard on, I want to put my sock on or my hat. And so I'm just, uh, you know, putting that on there. And then I'll play around with the position of it. I'm just using some uh, fabric, uh, I mean, some stuffing just to give it a little, um, I guess, thickness to it or a little fluffy. And so I just put my nose on there, hot glue that, and then I'll just position my sock where I want it to be. I'm not butting my fur up up underneath the nose like usual gnomes because I want to use some of my fluffy yarn uh, that I had on hand to give him a fluffy mustache because, you know, lumberjacks have fluffy beards. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, now to uh, decorate the top of my sock, I'm just cutting off the toe part and I like to use my pinking shears for this uh, only because it just cuts through and then I, I just can cut through it better. Anyway, so I'm just taking some wire, uh, cut off a piece of wire and then I have three 20 M M jingle bells and I got these at Hobby Lobby a few years back you can get those at Amazon or maybe some other craft stores I'm also going to be using a rusty star some pine and also some raffia so once I get these bells the way that I want them then I'll start put putting everything on uh, my sock I just twist everything together make sure that my bells and my star are you know facing the top and uh, you know just make sure everything's all nice and fun and woodsy And to get my sock to stay in place, I just add a bit of hot glue and just position it the way that I want. Okay, for his mustache, I'm using this uh, fluffy yarn that I've had in, on hand for many years. Uh, I think I got this at Hobby Lobby many years ago, but you know, you can get yarn any, any place, uh, any craft store. Anyway, so I wrap it around my fingers, I don't know, five or six times, and then I just cut off a piece. I tie it off in the middle, and then I um, uh, need some very sharp scissors. These are not cutting it. I'm going to, uh, in the in a second, I'm going to pull out my cutter bees because of those scissors are sharp and they work best. Anyway, so I, then I cut off uh, the loops to make my fluffy mustache. 